Hello, everyone, and welcome to second round front nine coverage of the 2020 River City Open. It is National Disc Golf Day here in, well, everywhere, but we're here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. We've got a couple hoser commentary. Jeremy Colling joining the booth today by Thomas Gilbert. Here we are, the round one standings. Andrew Marweed at 11 under with Chris Dickerson and Jeremy Colling. Willie Prince at 10 under. Couple players at 10 under also. Willie Prince with the lower PDJ number making his way onto the lead card today. Oh my goodness. <laughs> what is going on? Oh, oh my a swarm of bees! Swat it, Jeremy, swat it. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Angie Marweed. I guess. Oh, the cookie. Yeah, the cookie monster himself. He's loving it. Absolutely. And Chris Dickerson, Torn Pro. Fingers through the hair. Oh yeah, that's smooth. We're right into the action here at Brewer Park. Hole one is a 256 par three straight ahead. Brewer is the, I would say the easier of the two courses we're playing. Certainly want to go low on this course, um, but this is one of the easier holes on the course to start off. Definitely, you're gonna want to take that outside hyzer, probably with an overstable putter, or you're opting for the flick line straight up the middle. Mm -hmm. I'm going with the AVRX flea, AVRX3 flicking it out down the right side and having it just come back towards the pin. Beautifully done there. And that way, take away the limbs on the left side a little bit, even though I did catch a little bit of that low ceiling foliage. Chris ripping a low shot here with his PA3. Oh, skipping it up right into the circle. And that grass. Super thick, didn't get much slide there, but that's good enough for Dickerson. And that is going to be a DX Rhino for Andrew, mm. or maybe a maybe a Pro Rhino. I'm possibly yeah. I I didn't know if, what plastic it was, but I thought it was an AVR for a while, and then I saw that thumb track. I do know he likes throwing those Pro Pigs as well, so mm -hmm. it could have possibly been that with the thumb track. Yeah, Willie starting his day off right. Nice close inside circle putt for Birdie. And this is kind of what you expect to see on this starting hole. The really only danger is that if you throw it too high, you get caught up in that mm -hmm. um, those early limbs. And if you're just a little bit off, you could also hit those two guardian trees, but nothing that this card had to worry about on the starting hole. And Andrew Marley just sticking that mini is back pocket. I hope it doesn't crumble in there. <laughs> is that his, is he using a uh, cookie again? To mark his discs? I don't think he used it right there, but that'd be pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> that blew me away when he did that at uh, Smuggler's Notch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we're off to a good start with the star frame. Hole two is a little bit trickier. 385 feet. Plays a little bit shorter because you just go downhill. I have to make it through this initial gap. And then Heiser right around this bush with a forehand. Most players are going to be going forehand, but there is space to work a backhand turnover line as well with a mid-range. Yeah, everyone in this card, I feel, has a pretty decent forehand, so I figure that's what we're going to see. So you line up, oh, just got a little bit over on it. Yep, Star Wraith in that. Ooh, decent kick there. Yeah, it could have been, could have been a lot worse. Uh, could have been maybe better, too, if I'd done it better. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that was uh, overturned with my beat up Star Wraith. Chris is going with his FX2, and this is just picture perfect. Yeah, really well thrown there. And going through the widest gap the <laughs> yeah. entire way, and just absolutely parks it. Mm hmm. Marweed going with the 2016 Sex and Firebird, one of his favorite discs to go to. This is also looking pretty nice. A little gets a over little bit of flex. Yeah, pushes a little bit long into that. A little yeah. bit gets a nice friendly rollout. Mm -hmm. And that'll put him right outside the circle for a slightly obstructed look for the birdie. Really going with that backhand play. Yeah, I believe this is his buzz, and this is turning over. Oh. and catching one of the last things in the way. That was yeah. heading down there for the green. That's one of the really tricky things with that backhand line is you have to push it so wide initially to miss those leaves. Oh my, mm. giving it a good run on line the whole way. And 
really giving Ooh. it a good run too. I thought he had made that one, but that's a little bit extra roll out there. It's going to be kind of a tester yeah. par save. Andrew down to a knee, straddling out, falling wow. forward and making the putt. Great putt there. It really makes good with a nice stab right there. Perfect putt. Par is saved. And that must be such a nice feeling for Chris. One of the first to drive on the hole and last to tap out. Yeah. Hole three, 283 foot blind, sidearm, hyzer, maybe a backhand turnover. It is a bit tricky on that line because you really have to get it go, going pretty hard right, right about that turn there. And there's a bunch of trees on the screen. Getting down here is one thing, but making the putt is going to be mm -hmm. a little bit extra bonus. Yeah, there's a lot of fun little putting lines through there. It's mm -hmm. Chris Hangs a little too tight and just falls down in the fairway. And a little bit of um, extra room off the side of the tee box allows the player to get a little bit better angle. Oh, wow. And that is perfectly played there from Andrew. And even that, without hitting anything, has still got an obstructed look. Mm -hmm. and he went with that for uh, the Firebird. I'm going with my concrete slab. Looking for more of the skip here. Uh-huh. Oh yeah, and yeah, oh. I thought it must have hit a tree, but it just never even hit anything. I I didn't know how it didn't get to the circle, yeah, but it is sure. really far right. Uh, Will it run into some trouble? A little bit of a late release, and Dickerson, this is not an easy save to get. And that's a good throw. Yeah. Really with it tricky. He got actually got decently up there, so he has this mm -hmm. little pitch hyzer. Uh, an early release, and that is going to be trouble for Willie. A long par save left, and hyzering just short, and he'll have about 22 feet left for the bogey, just outside the circle. Nice putt there. Nice you go little. with the straddle for the jump putt a lot? It, that, it changes. Okay. Sometimes I'm feeling more like just doing a traditional stance. Yeah. Um, I know you that, do like to go to that straddle stance sometimes. I felt like that was good there for those trees that you had lined up. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes it just frames up the putt better with the tree or whatever the obstacles in the way. Mm -hmm. And Chris able to save his par, Willie. The short putt for his par, or his bogey, excuse me. Bogies are not going to be really acceptable at Earl Brewer Park. This is a course where you really have to shoot low. You're looking at 10, 11, 12 is a really good number, but anything less than that, you're going to be losing ground on the lead group. A whole four is just straight up the gut. You can see the band right there off the tee. Kind of a good ace run, a little bit of a slope behind the pin, so if you go long, you might have a longer comeback putt. And this is hung out a little bit too wide right, but mm -hmm. I think Mari will have a look at the pin. You going with your Avier X3? Yeah. Oh, and a little redirect off a tree. Yeah, I, I actually thought that that tree wasn't helpful, but uh, seeing how it's next to the pin and it stopped my <laughs> disc, <laughs> it actually was pretty helpful. This is a little fun hole in the course that you always want to give an ace run in practice. Yeah. It's right there in front of you, uphill. Mm -hmm. Just want to float it into the basket. But it does drop off behind the basket. So uh -huh. a lot of these shots, if they're coming in too fast, will just crest that hill. And, uh, oh, and the double kick. And actually, I believe there was three consecutive kicks there, unfortunately, for Willie. Putting him out there, having to work his way through the limbs. And well, he's left that for par. This is kind of a little bit of a scary putt. Mm -hmm. And that wow. is a perfect up and down release. Marwood's changed his putt over the years. He's gone 
Oh my gosh, <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> that is certainly not a cookie. <laughs> not a cookie, but a good way to remind yourself that putting is truly easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For some. In, for the, some. in the right mindset, yes. for sure. The mindset really does make a huge difference on the putting green. Oh my gosh. It's like, it's crazy. It's the thing we practice more than anything else, and yet it is the biggest stroke separator from tournament to tournament and three birdies on hole four and we're off to hole five Marwood with a great start four through four so far 326 feet straight down the gut here really just have to hit a gap a couple of lines there's a forehand Anheuser play also a backhand mid-range are the two most common plays Marweed going with the first one, trying to flex his Sexton Firebird. Uh, and he knew it right out of his hand. Yep. He had a bit of a late release and got a kick to the right side. You're going with your Wraith here? No, Eagle L. Eagle L, nice. Yeah. Oh, with a great little kick there. Yeah, I actually was really surprised by the result of that. I, I thought when I, hit, when I hit that tree, I was going to be 60 feet away, but then... Mm -hmm. Luckily, got a nice advance to 31 feet. Dickerson just throwing a, probably a putter. Yeah, that looks like his PA3 again. Just sliding it up right there into yeah. the basket. Too good. Will Will, yeah, and that's the buzz again, and this one's looking really nice. Oh, yeah. Yep. 25 feet left for the birdie. And Marweed. Ooh. Right there by the OB line. There was OB to the right side. Oh, separating wow. Separating hole five and six is fairway. And that's a great pitch there. A nice save. And I, I believe he was on the line. I did not realize that. Yeah. There you go. Oh. <laughs> did that. that is a heartbreaker. Man. Not a good putt, but. <laughs> so close, though. It's very, very close. Just, just do the left side yeah. chains. Oh, this is a cut through. Screwed view. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> the basket's upside down. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Chris with the only birdie of the card. Wow. Yeah, that's one you want to get for sure. I mean, Definitely. you want to get all of them, but that is that's one that's right there in front of you. And just playing downhill, it's all it is is just hit the initial gap and you'll be down there. Mm -hmm. And very similarly to Riverside, here at Brewer, you want to get like five to six of these first couple holes. Mm -hmm. Like this is a really really hot stretch where you can pick up a lot of birdies. And through. Five holes. Dickerson is now tied with Marweed at four under. Hole six is the first par four of the course. This is a reachable par four. This is certainly one that we could see an eagle from this card. Mm -hmm. 547 feet. You just really got to take a stable driver, maybe even one that can stand up a little bit and throw it with hyzer and just try to avoid all the roots on the ground and all the big bases of the trees. Yeah, the play really is. You can see that one tree just left of the cameraman. You want to kind of flip up inside or just barely outside of that tree. Right. And that's a nice conservative throw from Dickerson. He's not trying to throw too much into it. Mm -hmm. I don't. He probably has the best chance of the guys in this card with his power. And maybe, I don't know. I don't really play I for it. some credit. I just don't play for that shot. Yeah, for sure. I was I, I kind of expected Chris to give it a little bit more, but he likes to just keep it down the fairway, and that's yeah, good play. Marwe with a nice shot as well. And I was trying oh, to go the flip up play, and I just <laughs> I just forgot to release the disc. Like I just it just kind of fell out of my hand. Yeah, and, a little bit early there. Uh huh. But this is. <clears throat> Oh, whoa, Willie really going way over the top. Yeah, I think Huge Anheuser. With the bogey and the spit out, I think maybe, yeah. I don't know if this is a normal golf play, but he definitely oh. had a little bit of frustration. Kicks to, back into the fairway. Yeah, not a bad result at all. And 
That's my MD2. Oh, nice little redirect there. Yeah. Are you just outside circle? Yeah, I'm like 40 feet away. Okay. I really didn't think that I could make it that far far forward. It was a pretty good break, honestly. Wow. And Willie with a little bit hot run. He's actually outside the circle. Skipping in between the two trees. Yep. Chris, a little standout shot. Going with his overstable PA3. And make nice it, shot there. Yeah, making easy work of that approach. Married with just a little standout, a little lean out on the knee forehand. I'm pretty sure that's a rhino. Okay. I'm pretty sure that's a rhino. I'd be willing to bet. Oh, big man, big putt. <laughs> that was about as sloppy of a three as I think you can even <laughs> draw up on this hole. Happy to hit that one, no doubt. Uh, and Willie's got to pick things up here. This is not the start you need out here. Nice and easy, easy birdie for Chris. Yeah, this is one of those holes in the course that you really, really want to get the birdie on. You can almost salvage a birdie from anywhere on this fairway. Just, it can get a little bit hairy on the rough in the left side, but you definitely want to be able to pick this one up. I think it played as a second easiest hole on the course. Not that difficult of a par four, yeah. It's certainly one that a four does not feel like a par. Hole seven, the second par four, 570 feet. There's a stretch of three pars in a row. You just want to get a drive just left of these trees, set yourself up in the sunshine here for approach with a low ceiling through these trees. Your disc is probably going to want to match exactly what the drone's doing here with a <laughs> left to right zigzag motion up to the pin. The tricky thing here is just the slightly low ceiling downhill kind of plays some tricks on the thrower. Mm -hmm. But this is looking really nice. Oh yeah. Just missing that tree, skipping yep. to the left side fairway. It's too easy sometimes for that man, I swear. <laughs> Yeah, you definitely, you can see those trees on the left. You want to skip just in front of those to get around because the fairway is kind of separated by these trees that Annie just missed there. Oh, yeah. Oh, sneaking through. Mm -hmm. And that is in a great position. I'm getting a little sneaky. I'm trying to do the forehand line because it opens, well, because that's what I like to hit gaps with. That's why I'm doing <laughs> it. But it also, if it's oh. thrown well... It can really open up that fairway and get even farther than... That looked like it barely clipped anything. I, you know, what it hit, I couldn't really see from where I was standing on the tee, and then I walked like 10 feet down, and I was like, oh, yeah, that's what it hit. <laughs> it made itself very clear. Did it hit a tree or just it, on the branches? In those branches, there's like a couple of like just, bigger ones. Uh, and look at yeah. this. It's, Willie has got oh, the farthest shit. drive of the group by, a long, by about 40 feet. And there is a little bit of a flip up. Okay. Throw here. Only a little bit of roots to worry about with my stance. I just didn't get that flipping uh, up all the way, and that kicked out left. So now I've got to save my par. Yeah, Chris lining up that right side gap. Ooh, throwing a little high. Yeah, the, he got away oh, with wow. one there. That is a that was a bad shot that <laughs> that worked out as well as it could. And you're going to go left side of these trees? Yeah, yep. just going to skip the little firebird up there. Not much spins, not Ooh, much skip. Whoa. Okay. And just parked. And after that big drive, Willie's got that little short pitch here for Eagle. Oh, is he running it? He's oh, running yeah. it. It looked oh, like he wow. was from the from back there. From here, you, it didn't yeah. look like it was much yeah. of a run <laughs> from but where we were from. It definitely looked like it had a chance. I'm trying to run it, but it looks like I'm not trying to run it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and here we have just a bunch of short little cleanups for par. Ooh, fake out. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of the trickier par fours on the course, I feel. It requires two pretty
pretty good shots. Yeah, I don't actually. I mean, I yes, it is. It definitely requires a tricky tee shot. Mm -hmm. But I, I think when you execute a shot like like Willie did, yeah, it really doesn't like it's only one tricky shot that you have to worry about. That tee shot definitely yes. is is a difficult tee shot though. Mm -hmm. But if you land any bit short, those those gaps oh yeah just feel smaller and smaller. Yeah, they they, they shrink up real quick if you have a bad drive like mine. <laughs> and Dickerson and Marweed and Willie all with the birdies. Moving on to hole eight. R4, 635 feet, and this is really the key here, just getting through this gap, that low ceiling there makes it tricky to figure out exactly how you want to get through there. And then the green is obstructed pretty much on all four, or every side, yeah. all the way around the green is. Hmm. So this is the hole you guys were caught up in the rain. Uh huh. It's just random little burst of cloud and started drizzling pretty hard on us. Yeah, and right I think before we played this hole, we had a little bit of a backup, and Chris ran about a quarter of a mile to his truck to get his umbrella oh, and wow. back, <laughs> and got here in time, like before I even noticed he was gone. Holy. And like, I looked over at the parking lot, and I see like a little dot of Chris Dickerson. And I'm like, <laughs> is that Chris? <laughs> Mark of a true athlete. <laughs> yeah. And that was overturned from Marweed, but look oh, at this wow. break there as it what kicks a great back. Kick. That is the difference. That is certainly a stroke difference, yes. without question. It is very thick and bad off to the right side. Man, this rain just looking like something out of a movie. And Willie over and through everything, and once wow. again, that is an enormous drive. Yeah, that is a big, big time throw. That just makes that upshot again that much simpler. Uh huh. You go with the low. Ah, just it's overturned my it. Yeah, that thing has to be released with Heiser. And I, I don't know how on earth this managed to make it as close to the edge of the of the rough as it did. Mm -hmm. But it really tried to get back out into the fairway. And rightfully so, it didn't make it all the way through. Yeah. <laughs> I did yeah. not deserve anything close. And he's going big forehand around the outside. And wow, that is a great result there. Yeah, especially after that tee shot was overturned to be up there parked for the birdie. Also, for a quick lesson for anyone at home, with the backhand, you have that clockwise spin, so the disc wants to kick out yeah, more sure. when it's hitting on the right side bushes. Mm -hmm. You throw a thumber there from the rough, and it looks like you found the rough again. I was a little disappointed with that result of my throw <clears throat> because it, the gap was there. It just was, okay. I had a lot of limbs in my, in my reach back, so. I, yeah wasn't the result I was looking for, obviously. It was Chris is getting the result he was looking for. And look at this and again. Willie with an eagle look. And this is early release. This needs to get through, and it does not. And He's going to have an outside circle look. He's going to have to work for the birdie now. Mm -hmm. Got to lean out forehand. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That was a great run there. That was close. I was just telling you the other day, I've actually only got one forehand putt made in my entire career. <laughs> as much as I throw forehands, I don't make the putts with them. Man, that's crazy. I know. And Willie's going to feel pretty bad about taking a par yeah. after that big drive. It's always unfortunate having the best drive of the group and not getting up and down. Puts a little bit extra pressure on you, especially when, yeah. you, when you mess up the approach a little bit. You really... Clutching back up and making that putt is is a sign of someone who's very mentally strong. Yeah, it's a very tough thing to do. As Marweed and Dickerson, with their great approaches, mm -hmm. they are both one shot off perfect through the first eight holes. That is incredible. That is definitely the start you want to this round. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're looking for like that six, five to six down range. Seven yeah. down is bonus territory. Yeah, and eight's the unicorn. It doesn't. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it exists, but it's very difficult to do. Obviously, and the final hole in the front nine. Here we are, 428 feet. The shot that was kind of made. This hole was kind of made famous from Shomez, I would yeah. say. Uh, this is the hole that was aced um, by the local named Logan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he threw a Paul Macbeth force on a pure hyzer straight into the basket. A really impressive shot. And Dickerson has come up short and right. And 
Andrew looks like he's has his pink destroyer in hand. I love holes like this. That are, I mean, it's just wide open. It seems somewhat boring from the tee, but it's not boring. This distance. It doesn't see. It's like right there in front of you. You got this yeah. big yellow band sitting out there <laughs> against the the sea of green and the mm -hmm. grass. But getting that distance and controlling your driver at this range, especially slightly uphill yeah. at 428 feet, it's actually a really tough thing to do. For sure. And for those big power throwers, the hyzer, you want to play that just super wide hyzer. Though those trees on the right kind of pinch you off just a little bit, so you have to flatten something out on the right side of the fairway. And I'm going with the big germ Thunderbird, and I'm trying to move a left to right, and I just didn't quite commit all the way to it, mm -hmm. and not quite getting all the distance either, but it's a putt from about 45.50. And the height was all right. Yeah. The aim was not. <laughs> Chris, he didn't even get a step putt in there. He's deadly with these. Oh, the height was not right. Not right. But the aim, aim was right. <laughs> yeah. Willie with a little bit of a downhill look here. And that's just out left side chains. And again, Willie just can't catch a break right now. Yeah. Andrew looking for a stroke on the cart and that unicorn start. Yeah, eight down through the wow. first nine. That is so incredible. Made a couple of good putts, but yeah. really just putting himself in birdie position on every hole minus hole five. Mm -hmm. He's enjoying uh, National Disc Golf Day. Yeah. Nice there. Clean up for par. And in a second, we'll have Willie and Chris come and do the same. Willie, you can see a little bit frustrated with that slow start. Yeah, only one under on the front nine. And Chris, a seven down front nine, that's off, obviously a good start, but... He, one he, off the pace, though. Yeah, that's, I know. One off the pace. You wouldn't think that, but Andrew, you can see it right there. Just four birdies in a row, little par in between, and another four birdies right there. See if he can keep this hot stretch all right come back for the back nine we'll bring you the conclusion of the second round from the river city open here in grand rapids michigan